Hey guys, I recently started making these hammers with a brass inlay, and when I started to design these, I couldn't find a lot of good information out there on how to mill brass on a hobby level CNC like this one. So I just wanted to put out a quick video to show you what I learned and what my experiences were, and hopefully help someone else out who's looking to mill some brass. Let's get to it. So let's start off talking about material. Uh, there's two types of brass you can easily find online. There's 360 and 260. Uh, 260 is basically um, ammo brass, and you can see kind of the color difference between the two. Your 360 is a little more shiny, uh, bright brass, uh, kind of just more what I think of when I think brass. And the 260 has a little bit more yellowish uh, color to it. Uh, so I've done all my milling with 360, uh, these smaller sizes, and then going up to two inch. Um, they mill really easily, and they come, the, the supplier I've been getting them from on eBay, the material's really nice. It's cut from round bar, and it's perfectly round. Uh, the faces are, are nice and coplanar, or at least very, very close to it. The 260 I bought, I thought I would try it out because it was a couple dollars cheaper, uh, but it looks like rather than being cut from round bar, it's cut from a piece of plate. So the edges are very rough and there's kind of some defects in it. And I think also like these edges are not uh, perpendicular to the face. So when you're trying to do something like uh, inlays where you're gonna cut a two inch diameter uh, recess, you really want your uh, brass insert to be perfectly round. So, uh, would not, I'm not even going to bother. I might try to, I might try to mill this just to see how it works, but for what I need it for, it's worthless. So when you're going to mill this stuff, you need a way of holding it. And the, the best way I've come up with, especially with this round stuff is to create a recess that's just barely bigger than the material. So it can't move around at all in there. And then you use uh, painter's tape. And on each side on the on the bottom here and on this with a couple drops of CA glue and drop it in there and that will keep it from rotating while it's being machined and then having this slot here allows you to get a screwdriver underneath it and pop it out when it's done. So there's three different bits you'll use for doing these types of engravings in brass. The first is an end mill bit and the reason why you need the end mill bit is even if the brass you're using is perfectly coplanar when you do the, between the wood, the uh, tape, the glue, and everything, when you get it in there, chances are it's going to be just barely out of plane. And while, you know, a thousand seven inch isn't much, when you're doing fine engravings like this, uh, it really starts to show. So you'll want to do a planing cut with an end mill. And the main thing to remember is just to go slow with these and uh, don't take big bites uh, because with these belt driven systems, they're just not very rigid and they will def deflect on you. The second bit is a tapered bit and I'll put a link in the description to uh, the type of bit and where you can find it. Um, but while it looks like it comes to a point, it actually is flat. And so that'll give you a nice smooth bottom in your cut and that'll take out most of your waste and then you'll finish with a detail bit like this one and when these are brand new they will just drop into a wood or your uh, mdf but this one is is at the end of its life it needs to go but you get two maybe three millings out of these little guys before they're dull but you can buy them in packs off of amazon for pretty cheap and like I said, I'll put a link to these. For speed, I'll put my speeds and feed rates and all that in the description below of what I used. Um, like I said, you really just need to go slow and take light passes. So, and it, it, you know, it depends on your machine as to how rigid it is and how fast you can go. Uh, but that at least give you a starting point. You can play from there, whether you need to speed up or slow down. And the last thing is dust collection. And coolant, you don't need any kind of coolant for light stuff like this. Uh, it doesn't create very much heat at all, so it's not going to burn up your bits or anything. Uh, and dust collection, I personally don't run my dust collection when I do this. 
I just don't really want the brass going into my dustbin. Uh, I just come back when it's done and there's just a pile of brass shavings around it and I just vacuum that up with my shop vac. So I hope this helps. If you have any further questions or anything, just uh, drop me something in the comments. Thanks.